um, Washington commanders, and it is breaking and it is important. There's a lot of angles to this. The commanders come out and they say Carson Wentz is going to be the starter for this weekend's game against the Cleveland Browns. And it's a head scratcher for me. I, I was talking to Jeremy Reeves about this. I don't want to get into the decision to bench Tyler Heineke last week, Ron Rivera coming out. He takes the, the microphone off the podium. He puts it on his shoulder. It's all very strange. So let's dig into it. It actually kicks off one of several things that I think we're underreacting to this week. And it all started because of that benching, right? And it, it was during the loss to the Niners, Brock Purdy lighting up what was a top five defense with this Washington squad. And then he said he made it to protect Heineke. So this then causes a quarterback controversy situation in NFL media circles. And let's take a first to listen to what Coach Rivera said yesterday about what would go into the decision. Well, I just want to make sure I've got an opportunity to speak to everybody before I make a decision. I want to make sure I've got all the, you know, all the thoughts and ideas and concepts and you know, again, at the end of the day, the decision is going to be made based on what I believe is best for us going forward. It, I think, gives us the best opportunity right now. That's what this is really about. What? What is going on here? So the change is very curious, given how much the guys in the locker room have rallied around Taylor Heineke. Also, was not playing terribly. And this has been something going on all season long. The initial switch sparked such a turnaround for this team. You put Heineke in there and you got guys coming to my show, Brandon Marsh talking about Heineke. We got Joe Hayden talking about Heineke. Those, those are the quarterbacks they're picking out of nowhere to talk about on this program. But Rivera, one thing that we need to point out is that he said he didn't, he's not going to approach the decision on his own. He went before choosing to name Wentz the starter to the guys in that locker room. And I don't know this, but I can only assume that's going to be the, the captains, right? That's going to be the guys who, the Terry McLaurins, who run things, who know things. And that decision then is made with support, with player support for Wentz to take over the quarterback room in starting duties. Uh, so that's something to point because I, you know, if there's a knock on Carson Wentz, it's that he loses the locker room. He, you know, isn't the the favorite of t- uh, teammates, um, even though I think, you know, there's a lot of truth maybe to that and a lot of truth against that. Uh, but this is a, a decision that I think Ron Rivera smartly came out and got ahead of and said, I'm going to talk to the guys in the locker room. And, and you don't hear coaches do that often. And I think it's very specific because of this case. Uh, and I just, I still don't, I don't quite get it. Uh, Heineke didn't play poorly against the Niners. He didn't light it up, but he was facing the number one defense in the NFL. And he was by far not the big reason the commanders lose this game. If you look at the numbers, just the numbers, Heineke had one interception, right? But only Patrick Mahomes has had a better passer rating against this Niners defense over the last 10 weeks. Wentz, also played well in garbage time. He, he did his thing, as you can see. But I think what we're underreacting to is that we're obsessing with the quarterback controversy this week and we're, you know, dissecting the words of Ron Rivera when really the problem isn't A or B. It's not Wentz and it's not Heineke. Both are playing pretty well for Washington. This team is built around defense. This team is built around a run game. It's what you think about and look, think about when you look at Ron Rivera. And we knew this coming into this year and they've ridden that top five defense to get here in contention for a playoff spot. You know, they lost to the Niners, not because of Heineke, not because of Wentz, not because of a benching they lost because they gave up 37 points they got a combined 68 yards on 27 carries from their running backs it is simply that simple so i don't care if it's Hanke or if it's Wentz or if it's joe thyson back there at this point if they're not better in those two areas it's going to be really hard for them to pick up the wins they got the browns then they got the cowboys division rival and to earn that playoff spot so i'll say that and i'll also while i'm here and maybe i'll pull in matthew hamilton for that do we have hamilton hamilton we, you and I were talking about this before the show, so I want you to, hey, man, hey, man, what's up? Uh, I want <laughs> you up? to sort of get in here and and talk about this with me. Wentz gets a bad, has a bad rap a little bit about a teammate. It's followed him through his career. Uh, and I'm a little excited, you know, and I'm bummed for Heineke. I'm sorry, I'm moving my table. Um Bummed for Heineke, but excited that Wentz has a bit of an opportunity here because he has a narrative. He wants to rewrite it. And, you know, we can talk about what happened with the Eagles, of course, but then his leaving the Colts was kind of funny, too. Yeah, he was pretty much made the scapegoat for what happened there down the stretch with uh, with the Colts collapsing against the Jaguars, missing the playoffs. We heard all those 
reports from unsighted sources, basically pinning it all on him and, and how he lost the locker room and they didn't believe in him and, and all sorts of stories that came out. So um, I think it was kind of unfair. I, I, I didn't love that from the organization, you know, kind of kicking the guy on his way out the door. But uh, it is it is kind of cool that Wentz has a chance to, to rewrite some of that stuff here. And maybe, you know, just thinking about this from Rivera's perspective, I think, you know, when you look at Carson Wentz and the body of work in his career, you know, obviously there have been some down moments, but we've also seen the ability that he has and the potential. So maybe there's a feeling that, you know, while the floor might not be as solid as Heineke's, maybe the ceiling is a little bit higher. So if they don't get those things from the run game and defense, maybe he can elevate the other players around him a little bit more than Heineke can. And I remember this specifically because we were working together on Good Morning Football and I would constantly say, and I love the Colts and you know that, but they did not lose that game to the Jags because of Carson Wentz. They lost that game because the defense could not do anything to stop the Jags, especially in that half of work. And and then there was, you know, we just need a veteran. We need somebody that players respect and they bring in Matt Ryan and now look where the Colts are. So it's, you know, the, the Carson Wentz, I probably sees that, feels that, and sees this is what has to be a tremendous opportunity. And the key is defense and the run game. And the key also is the fact that Ron Rivera checked with his teammates before or before with his players before making the decision, right? Yeah, definitely. Because that, that says to me that there is support in that Washington locker room for Carson Wentz. And uh, I'm with you. I think this is an exciting opportunity for him. And, and uh, this could be a fun story here to, uh, over these next couple of weeks if he is able to rally and have a couple of good games and get Washington into the playoffs. Do you know what I'm going to do right now? I'm going to bid you adieu because I'm going to talk about your team that you grew up rooting for, the New York Giants, and how I think <laughs> they should keep Daniel Jones. What? to blast for me. Listen, let's stay in the NFC East here and get real here. A team that doesn't know about the quarterback situation uh, in Washington to a team that kind of has to feel good about what they've got. Yeah, they're coming off a loss. They don't have the playoffs clinched. I get it. They lose a heartbreaker to Minnesota on a 61-yard Greg Joseph field goal. But Dable was asked after the game if there was anything his team could feel good about after the loss. Take it away. No, you never feel good after a loss. Um, You know, you always... You never feel good after a loss. We get it, coach. We get it. But the Giants are still one win away from clinching a playoff spot. And I think everyone should feel good. You included, Dayball. I'm going to be the Pollyanna here. Putting, you know, I did my yoga this morning. I'm feeling all the things. I'm talking about chakras and all this stuff and intention. Your guy, Daniel Jones, played really well in that game. We've talked about this all year long, how he's been steady and he's made the most of what he has. And on Saturday, he did it still and consistently. Did he might outside of maybe Chicago, who is a, uh, a lesser impressive receiving core than this giant squad? No one. And Daniel Jones, they're beat up. He doesn't have weapons other than Saquon and he's still doing it. Look at what he did against the Vikings. He completed nearly three quarters of his passes. Okay, for 334 yards, Richie James and Isaiah Hodgins as his leading receivers. Are you kidding me? And in the process, he wills the Giants to a brilliant fourth quarter comeback. And it wasn't just the numbers. You cannot tell me that this two point conversion of Daniel Bellinger. Let's take a look at this. It's in the fourth quarter to tie the game with just over two minutes to go. Are we joking? You cannot throw a better ball than that in a more clutch situation. I've been saying it the past month, every game from here on out, is the biggest game in Jalen Jones's career. That's it. And even in a loss on Saturday, he's showing that he's the guy for this team going forward. He can't convince me otherwise right now. And it might be as simple as, well, what are their other options? What else can they do? But remember, and they got to figure out Saquon for sure. But coming into the season, no one had playoff aspirations for this team. That, you know, that was the goal of 2022. We need to reset that. We always need to think, but as you end one year and go into the next year, what were you doing? And thinking about in the beginning of the year, beginning of the season, we were the only question we all want answered was, is Daniel Jones the guy? Is Daniel Jones the guy? And I think he's done enough to show that that's their answer and that he can be. Uh, And if he obviously solidifies a playoff spot, then that would be great. And finally, uh, here's what we're really underacting to. And this one I'm pretty passionate about because I don't think enough people are talking about this. The Steelers are still alive in the AFC playoff picture heading into week 17. Here's, it's going to take a miracle. 
going to take a little bit more than chakras and intentions to get this done. They need a lot of help. Take a look. Beat the Ravens and the Browns. Fine. Hard. Fine. Patriots beat the Dolphins in Week 17. They need Seahawks to beat the Jets in Week 17. The Bills got to take down the Patriots Week 18, and the Jets have to take down the Dolphins in Week 18. Doable, but it's a lot. There's about a 2% chance they can actually make it in right now. But that doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, and let me explain why. The fact that this team has a pulse is nothing short of a miracle, okay? And Tomlin deserves most of the credit here. They had a disastrous start to the season. They were two and six. Pittsburgh has now been five and two since the bye. And at seven and eight, Mike Tomlin has a legitimate chance that nobody thought was possible midway through the season, a legit shot to get his 16 straight years without a losing season. And even if it doesn't happen, right? and the more probable scenario unfolds and the Steelers miss out on the postseason dance, right? This stretch has still been so important. And I like that the importance has not been lost on their head coach. Pay close attention to Mike Tomlin here, mic'd up for Saturday night's game against the Raiders. Listen to this. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) We grew up tonight. We grew up tonight. (laughs) we grew up tonight we grew up tonight that was the goal that's what this season was about coach is telling you right there with what the season was this is the young team the grow-up moments are so critical for tomlin he's rebuilding this team the team is learning how to win they're learning how to close out games how to handle any of these situations and to see a rookie quarterback and receiver connect for a game-winning score in the final minutes beyond encouraging for tomlin for steelers fans don't underestimate the importance of growing from teachable moments and carrying positive vibes into the offseason all is not lost and regardless of what happens to playoff chances this run that we've seen the second half of the season is critical to the success of this team and what's going to happen in the future. And it's exactly why Mike Tomlin is going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. You know, he continues to succeed with every imaginable obstacle and how he does that will never cease to amaze me. All right. We've got lots to talk about um, coming up on the show. We'll spell out your playoff picture. Maybe we'll do some predictions, some end of the year stuff, but also we've got Aaron Rodgers smiling creepy uh, in, in slow-mo. Nobody needs to see that. Nobody needs to see that. 